Today we're using this white oak board to build shelving in the laundry room. Let's get to it. Okay, here we are in the laundry room. My wife has been renovating it and she needs a little bit of help. She's put those two cabinets on the back wall. She's attached the wallpaper and now she's asking me to build her a nice shelf. Something that'll sit right about here where she can store a few extra materials on top of it. And she wants a nice bar that will sit underneath it that she can hang clothes on to dry when she wants to. The first step is to ask my wife to come in here so I can measure how high the shelf should be. Where were you thinking? I was thinking right around here. Perfect. Oh. Thanks, babe. There we go. So it's kind of hard to measure because there's a little bit of a lip. But I think the largest measurement is about 36 and a quarter. I'm going to cut it with 36 and a half and then I'll trim it down to fit, especially with the diagonals on the side here. Let's quickly talk about how we're going to build this shelf. Before me, I have these two boards. One seven feet by about 11 inches. The other one four feet by about four inches. I'm going to cut the seven foot board down into two lengths of 36 and a half. And I'm going to cut the shorter board down to 36 and a half. And then I'm going to miter the ends at 45 degrees. I'll put tape on the back side of the miters, I'll put glue in the miters, and then I'll simply fold everything flat with some internal supports. I'm cutting the panels down to length. I'm cutting them a little bit longer such that after I assemble the shelf, I'll just come back and trim the whole thing. Okay, now I've got all three pieces cut. Let's do the miters. I started off by using my angle finer to set the blade at 45 degrees. Then I used the first piece just to line everything up and get everything ready for the cut. At this point, I realized that that board was going to be too narrow to cut safely on the table saw, so I set up my micro jig gripper in order to be able to do this. Then ran the narrow board through, flipped it over, and did the other side. After that cut was done, I then went on to make the miters on the wider boards. Okay, I've got all the miters cut. As you can see, there was a lot of burning on this small metal piece. This piece wasn't quite flat, so I really had to push it down. And because it's so thin, it didn't have a lot of space to hold it. If I didn't have that micro jig gripper, it probably would not have been able to cut this because this was kind of a dangerous cut. I'm just going to give this light sanding to remove some of this burn and then we'll do a test fit. Okay, before doing the test fit, I just realized I need to make the stringers. These are going to be little pieces of pine that are going to sit right in here that will let these two pieces fold together and sit parallel with one another with a little bit of air gap. These are also going to be used for attaching it to the wall and to the cabinets because I just want to be able to slide it on. Using a spare 2x4 I had laying around, I first cut the stringers down to length. Then back in my table saw, I first cut off the factory edge on one side, and then flipped it over and cut them down to the right width. I noticed when I was cutting the longer stringer, the stringer that was going to go on the wall, it started to bind a little bit. So I put a shim just to make sure it didn't kick back. Okay, I've cut the stringers just out of some 2x4s. This long piece is actually going to be what's attached to the back wall in the laundry room. Two of these side pieces are going to be sitting on the sides, uh, mounted to the cabinets. And then two of these are going to be used for the glue ups, so they sit inside the shelf itself and then clamp them to it. So let's do a test fit now that we have all the stringers. Okay, so it fits pretty good. I noticed that this front piece isn't quite flat. It's bowed a little bit, so it sticks out a little bit on the sides. But I have the stringers in the middle that I can clamp to and just kind of squeeze everything together. So let's do that now because then we can attach the stringers into the laundry and start working on the clothes hanger. At this point, I realized that I needed to cut down the stringers just a little bit more because there was going to be that stringer on the back wall that I didn't want to hit. Okay, everything is almost ready for the glue up. The first step is to put masking tape on the back so I can fold it easier later. The plan is to use these about there, lined up with the very edge, flip everything over, hopefully it works. Throw some glue in there, clamp it all down. I'm also going to glue the ends of these so it's really strong internally as well. I'm making a mark now about 10 inches from the end where I want the stringers to be. And then I start applying a lot of glue to the miters and the stringers. I brush everything with a glue brush, fold everything over and then start clamping it down. This was actually a fairly tricky glue up for me. I kept having to peel the tape back just to make sure that the miners were lined up, especially considering that that front facing board wasn't quite flat. The table I'm working on right now, I actually made in my last video. It came in super handy for this project and I don't think I would have been able to do it without it. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description. Okay, that was an ordeal. I'm pretty much using every clamp I own at this point and I know I need to get some better clamps here. Whew. Let's just let this sit and cure and hope it turns out well. That was tough. 
All right, well, this is drying up. It's time to start on the next piece. My wife has told me she wants a rod across, just below the shelf where she can hang close to dry. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna paint it gold to start with, and then we're gonna cut it down to length and then we're gonna fit it in. After a quick couple of cuts on the miner saw, I took a scrap piece of plywood I had in the shop and screwed it to the base, just so it would stand up so I could spray paint it easier. And then I just gave it a quick sound. Okay, my wife actually asked me to use this rod on the bottom of the shelf originally, uh, but it's just some cheap kind of plasticky pipe that screws together with these knobs on the middle of it. So I think I'm gonna upgrade to this, but I still wanna keep the gold color. So I have this fair vintage gold that I'm gonna spray paint this. She doesn't actually know I'm doing this, so I hope when I show her at the end, she'll like it. While the rod is drying and the shelf is curing, it's time to add some crown molding. I'm gonna cut these down to length, cut them at 45 degrees, and then brad nail them in. Okay, I just made my first really big mistake. When I was cutting the crown molding, I only cut it at a 45 degree to each other. But then when I went to put it on the cabinets, I realized there was a second 45 degree cut that I should have made. Let me show you. You can see right there in the center, there's a big gap. So what I should have done, about 45 degrees, straight down and at a 45 degree angle. So two 45 degree cuts. And unfortunately, I don't have any more of this crown molding. I bought just enough for what I thought I needed. So we're just gonna move right on to the next part I need to do, which is installing these triggers. This one's gonna be back along against the wall and these are gonna be against the cabinets. So I start off by using a magnetic stud finder to find the studs in the back wall. I know I need to be really careful here because there's a gas line in this back wall that I definitely do not wanna hit. And then transfer the mark to the back stringers, pre-drill the holes, put the screws in there, line it up with the level and then start screwing the back stringers in. I then attach the stringers to the cabinets by clamping and then screwing them. All right guys, it's the next day. Let's take these clamps off and see how the miter joints turned out. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. Overall it looks pretty good, but there is a little bit of a gap right there and a little bit of a gap right there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. This is my first shelf where I mitered the edges at 45 degrees like this. The next step is to sand everything down smooth and then I'm gonna put a few coats of polyurethane on it. I recently bought this Fez Tool sander. It's six inch with a five millimeter stroke. It makes quick work of this wood. Really love this thing. And it fits right onto my dust extractor that I reviewed in my first video. All right, now I'm gonna sand this to 220 and then I'll do a light hand sand. You can't tell on video, but it is super smooth to the touch and it looks just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I just love the way white oak looks. It's probably my favorite wood. I'm applying polyurethane to the shelf. I mostly chose it because it's a water-based finish and it won't yellow the oak. I am kind of curious though to see what other finishes look like. One in particular is Rubio Monocoat. I hear great things about it. I find that this polyurethane gives it a little bit of a plasticky look, especially now that I've been living with it for a couple weeks. I got some more crown molding for when I messed up earlier. Let's try and do it right this time. This time when I cut the crown molding, I'm gonna pay attention to cutting 45 degrees in two axes. I know that the cabinets are 15 by 12, so I'm gonna cut longer on both of them, the same width as the crown molding. This crown molding is about three inches wide, so I need to cut about 18 inches by 15 inches. And I still have my old pieces, which I can reuse in order to get this right. So I'm gonna test on one of those first. All right, that took some figuring, but now I have a 45 degree cut this way and this way. First, let's try and fit this to see if it actually works. Okay, I can't believe this, but I messed up again. Imagine this is the top of my cabinet right here. I'm gonna put the camera molding where it should go. And as you can see, there's this giant gap right there. There's a giant gap there. So I did not cut this at the right angle. So I'm gonna need to think about where I should have cut it to make this work. So I looked up on YouTube how to cut crown molding and there were some good tips on it. Essentially what you need to do is you need to take your piece of crown molding and hold it upside down at 45 degree angle to the fence when you're cutting it. Then you can simply move the miter saw left and right at the 45 degree stops whenever you're cutting your different pieces of crown molding. I did a test piece right here. So as you can see, looks pretty good. I'm gonna cut the rest of these and then we're gonna attach it to the cabinets. To make my life a little bit easier, I decided that I would just paint the ends of the crown molding before attaching them. Next, with my trusty brad nailer, I attached the crown molding to the top of the cabinet. I came back with some putty and I filled in all the nail holes, as well as the seam between the two pieces. I used a little bit of silicone for the crown molding on the inside of the cabinet because there was a little bit of a lip that I had filled in with quarter inch plywood. The silicone just made a nice smooth surface for me to paint and made it look good in the end. 
It's now time to cut it down to length so that I can just slide it on the shelf. So after using masking tape to protect the finish, I cut the shelf down the length. I also decided to put one last coat of polyurethane on it and give it a quick sand up to 400 grit just to make sure it was perfectly smooth. And now the putty on the crown molding was dry, so it was time to go back and sand and paint. The shelf is done, the rod is done, and I'm about to put it all together. If you like this content, please remember to like and subscribe. Let's get this done. All right, here's that white oak shelf that I built. It's got the 45 degree miters on the end. You can see how tight those are. It should just slide on and then we should be done. All right guys, there it is. There's the white oak shelf in and installed. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Fits just right. Here, let me show you the top. All right, I'm gonna reattach the dryer and move everything back into place. Then I'm gonna ask my wife to come in here and give it a rating. It looks good. You hung the art too. Nice height. What would you rate it out of the 10? Um, I think it's a uh, eight out of 10. I think for it to be a 10, we would need a better washer and dryer. And then you'd also have to have the bar that comes down from the shelf that I bought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that wraps up for this video. Next week, I'll be building some gorgeous nightstands. See you then.